And Dr. John Lapook joins us now. Uh, Dr. Lapook, what exactly is this virus and why were these children so vulnerable? Yeah, adenovirus is very common. In fact, by the time you're an adult, most people have been exposed to it. And it's no big deal in somebody who has an intact immune system. It tends to cause these symptoms that we talked about in the piece, which are a runny nose, and, and you can have pink eye, you can have a sore throat. Uh, but you tend to kick it out of your system. Unfortunately, kids who are in facilities like this tend to have chronic illnesses. They tend mm. to be quite ill. And they could have anything from a breathing tube, they could be in a coma, some sort of underlying medical condition that weakens their immune system and makes them very easy prey for this type of virus. Uh, the CDC also monitoring what they describe as a polio-like illness, uh, AFM. What, what is this uh, affliction? Right. It's an illness called acute flaccid myelitis. Uh, it's actually quite rare. It affects fewer than a, one in a million people. Um, 149 people in the, in the year with the most number of people. That was 2016. We're having a, another recrudescence of it. There's an outbreak of it now. We don't really know what causes it. There are some various theories. And one interesting theory is that there's a virus called enterovirus D68. And perhaps it's a, a friendly fire thing where the virus shares some component of it with your own spinal cord, and the immune system goes after that virus and mistakenly also attacks the, vir the uh, spinal cord because there's something in it that's, that's very similar. That could be something in the, in the environment. It could be genetics. Uh, but right now, um, we have some kids who, who have been, uh, uh, who've been afflicted with it, and we're following this closely. Does that theory at all explain or help explain why we see the uptick now? Well, you know... It's possible that the enterovirus is more frequent in the fall. We tend to see it. If you look at the graph from the CDC, you see this uptick in September and October. Mm. So there may be something about the time of the year, and that may be something about the type of viral infection that you get. But we really don't know. But I don't want people to freak out about this. Enterovirus D68 affects millions of people every year, you know, like 10 to 15 million people. Wow. And yet... Only, I mean, if you're afflicted, that's right. not great for you, but it's only, say, at most 150 people in a year get it. You do the math on that, and that's maybe, you know, one in 100,000 people who get the virus will come down with the paralysis. Uh, another big medical story today, Sandra Day O'Connor, the uh, first ever female member of the U.S. Supreme Court, uh, announced she has dementia. Right. Help us parse out dementia and Alzheimer's. Right, and this is a very common thing that people get confused about. Dementia is the big name on top, right? And now underneath dementia, there's lots of things that can cause it. The most common is Alzheimer's. But there are other things, B12 deficiency, you can have Lewy body dementia, you can have Parkinson's and some other things. So in Alzheimer's, there is this gooey substance called amyloid, which we're not even sure exactly how it relates to the disease, but you have to have that in order to have the Alzheimer's. And of course, it's a devastating disease, affects more than 5 million Americans. There's really no effective treatment. And uh, it's, it's, it was very sad for me to read, for everybody to read today that, that uh, uh, Justice O'Connor is coming down with probably, she said dementia, prob probably early Alzheimer's. And it's something she's already dealt with in the sense that she stepped down from the court mm -hmm. earlier than she would have otherwise to care for her husband, who was suffering with Alzheimer's, died a few years after she left the court. Yeah. Um, you've reported a lot on the incredible burden uh, this disease takes on family and loved ones. Yeah, we did. We followed Mike and Carol Daly for 10 years, and she had Alzheimer's. And you see that, of course, it takes a toll on her, but it especially also takes a, a toll on the caregiver. And the caregiver yeah. often dies before the person who has the disease. And in the case of Justice O'Connor, um, it's so poignant because, you know, she lived with her husband who had it. She knew exactly what the symptoms were. She knew the silhouette of what she was facing when yeah. she finally realized, oh, I have dementia. And then is it, <laughs> is it probably, she thinks it's probably Alzheimer's. So she's facing something that she's seen before, and she knows what the challenges are. So. Knows exactly what's ahead for and, uh, whatever good so and of, of certainly course, sadness. Our, our, all of our thoughts, thoughts are with her, and we hope that she has. It'd be interesting to see. Um, I hope that there's some great support system, because I have to say that with a good support system, and that may include a nursing home or some similar facility, um, it can make it a world of difference, not only for the patient, the person who has the Alzheimer's, but for the, their, their loved ones who, you know, it, it can be almost impossible for them to take care of the person by themselves. And the, the final thing I would say about this is people with, you know, have to, all of us have to, when we're well, think about what would happen, what would we like, what are our wishes if we were to become demented, if we get Alzheimer's, because the time to discuss that, okay, if I, that happens and you need help, you say to your loved one or your yep. family, it's okay to bring somebody in or it's okay for me to go to a nursing home. The time to discuss it is when you're well, not when you have dementia, because at that point you're thinking, 
is impaired. An important conversation to have, Dr. Luke. Thanks for this conversation. Thanks, Brooke.